Thank you for the introduction. And uh, morning, everyone. Uh, following the excitement of the previous talk, I would like to introduce you a system that can transmit data from the screen to the camera on any type of screen content. It is imperceptible to the user, and it's real time. This is a joint work with my colleagues and my advisors at Dartmouth College. The idea of the screen camera communication is quite simple. It's encode data into the visual frames on the screen. And any devices with camera can turn the camera to the screen and decode data. And it actually can enable lots of exciting applications on top of it. Argumented reality could be one example. Imagine you're wearing a Google Glass, and the glass can fetch additional information from the surrounding display and embed the information to what you can see. And today, the most popular screen camera communication application is QR code. Well, QR code is a coded image on the screen, and any devices with camera can decode information behind this. And recently, Snapchat uses the QR code to, all, to all, allow us to automatically follow our friends. Well, QR code works great, but it has two key limitations. First, it is an awkward barcode on the screen the user cannot make any sense of. So it interferes with the content the user is looking at. Second, it is a static coded image and only transmit static information. So what does the ideal screen camera communication system look like? First, the communication should happen without showing this awkward barcode. And the content uh, on the screen should show the content as it normally does. And more importantly, this, the communication should happen regardless of the screen content. Let it be an image, a video clips, or even browsing a, a web or playing a game. And finally, the communication should be done in real time on off-the-shelf smart devices. And here, we design highlight to achieve all of the goals. And this is a quick demo. We have a transmitter on the left and the receiver on the right. The user is playing the game Food Ninja, and the transmitter secretly transmits the message Food Ninja to the receiver. But for sure, highlight is not just for Food Ninja. It can transmit data on any type of screen content, including images, video clips, or home screen, or even browsing a web or playing a game. So now let me show you how we make highlight work. To encode data, we leverage the alpha channel, a well-known concept in computer graphics. It controls the transparency on each pixel. And we know that the, the pixel color consists of three channels, red, green, and blue. So for example, we could create a purple color with these color intensity values. And alpha channel is orthogonal to these RGB channels and it has a value from zero to one. When alpha is zero, the pixel is fully opaque, so the purple color is still purple. When alpha is zero, is, uh, sorry, the, when alpha is one, it's is fully opaque. When alpha is zero, the pixel is fully transparent, so the output color will be the background color, which is black by default. And you can see, decreasing alpha value essentially dims the pixel. So we can encode data into pixel's transparency change. But to make sure the change is imperceptible to the user, we change alpha value by a small amount, only one to eight percent, because the refresh rate for most of display is limited by 60 hertz several orders of magnitude lower than the existing LED light. And also, since we could independently control 
each pixel's transparency. We could further divide the whole display into grid and let each grid to transmit data independently. So we could use the, those, we could use the grids to either boost the throughput or system reliability. And the receiver keeps monitoring the incoming color intensity changes and decode data. In addition, to support any screen content, we create a separate image layer dedicated to communication on, the, on top of the content layer. By default, this communication layer is black and is fully transparent. When we encode data, we just modify the transparency on the image layer and use alpha blending on GPU to combine the two image layers. Alpha blending is a mature GPU feature that can combine an image with a background to create appearance of partial or fully transparency. And in this example, we set three alpha values on the communication layer. And you can see a higher alpha value gives a darker appearance of the final look. And so, we do not directly modify the screen content pixel, pixel color, but achieve the same visual effects. And this method brings us three benefits. First, the encoding is instantaneous because the alpha blending runs on GPU. And it is a mature GPU feature, so we can call the functions at the application layer to specify alpha value without any low-level modifications. And second, since the communication happens on the separate image layer, our system enables the communication on top of any screen content, including images, video clips, or even the content with user interaction, like by browsing or games, which have not been done before. And finally, the communication, la the communication layer is transparent. So our system does not interfere with the existing GPU rendering process. But to make it work, we have three challenges. First, it is hard to configure the, the pixel's uh, alpha value change because we need to make sure the change is small enough to be imperceptible to the users, but big enough for the camera to detect. And second, on the receiver side, the camera can capture not only the coded transparency change, but also the ambient light, the camera noise, and the screen content change itself. So it is hard to detect data from the mixture. And finally, for both of the transmitter and the receiver, it need to do the data processing in real time. So for example, to support 120 frames per second video playing, both of the encoding and decoding time should be less than 8.3 milliseconds. And to address all these challenges, we first adapt the transparency change based on the sampled screen content frames. And second, we observe that the interfering sources have non-uniform impact on the camera sensor. So we further divide a communication grid into sub-regions and set higher weight to the regions less affected by the interfering sources. The weight help us to enhance the desired illumination change associated with data. And finally, we sample pixels and, fr and frames on both of the transmitter and the receiver to speed up the processing time. And next, let me introduce our uh, detailed design about the transmitter and the receiver. Now on the transmitter side, we first sample some screen content frame to configure the scene type. And we use an existing scene detection algorithm to label the content as static, gradual, or cutscene. Here, the cutscene has the most drastic screen content change. And based on the scene type, we encode data into the different, uh, we, uh, based on the scene type, we determine the alpha change and encode data into the different frequency of alpha change. 
The modulation length is six frames for each grid. And we then use GPU to combine the communication layer with the content layer to render the final frames. And if we zoom into the alpha configuration, we actually adapt alpha change in two steps. And here, we first adapt alpha change um, on the grid level. In, in our design, the darker the sample screen content frames, or the more drastic the screen content change, the higher the alpha change. It is because in those cases, human eyes are less sensitive to the alpha change. And we then fine tune the alpha value within a grid because we observe that if the alpha value are different between adjacent grids, we may see an edge between the grids. So here we use a Gaussian filter to smooth the edge. And then on the receiver side, when the camera captures a frame, it will first divide the frame into grades. And for each grade, the receiver uses the same scene detection algorithm and compute the color intensity for the grade using the weights for each subregion. And then the receiver uses VFT to project the color intensity values into frequency domain and detect the data by picking the peak uh, frequency power. And now let me show you our prototype and some key results. We implement our transmitter on Android platform and receiver on iOS. Um, and we choose iOS because it is the only platform to get 60 frames per second in real time without any low level modifications. And we use an image view APIs on Android at the application layer to specify alpha value. And here, we put the transmitter and receiver 30 centimeters away, and the ambient light is about 100 lux. The number of grades on the transmitter is, is 120. And we evaluate highlights on all type of screen content, including hundreds of images, 60 video clips, and all kinds of web browsing, gaming, and home screen scene. And we have put all of the testing images and video clips on our website, so please feel free to test them out. And first of all, let me show you the highlight ability to support any screen content. And in this figure, the y-axis shows the throughput, which is the number of bits successfully received per second. And we can see Highlight support can support any screen content with at least one kilobit per second throughput. And we observe that the system throughput as, uh, for some video without noticeable visual effect. Now let me conclude with future works and potential applications. The key factor limits the highlight throughput is the screen's refresh rate. It typically less than 120 hertz. But the physical response time for all LED pixel could be less than 10 microseconds. So potentially, we could vary alpha value on a pixel higher than 100 kilohertz. And we are finding ways to get close to the physical limit. And second, we are looking into advanced modulation coding scheme to further improve the system accuracy and throughput. And we are interested in testing highlight on variable devices like Google Glass, um, where, the, where the receiver can be moving, moving around. And to achieve the goal, we can embed some um, lightweight tracking algorithm to keep track of the transmitter screen while decoding the data. And for now, Highlight is still a one-way communication link. And we are finding ways to enable a feedback link from the receiver to adapt the transmission parameters like later rate. And now, Highlight can still enable lots of applications on top of it. In the beginning of my talk, I have mentioned augmented reality. Another example is user authentication. Today, Many security systems 
only authenticate their users when the user logs into the system. But with Highlight, this system can continuously authenticate the user's physical presence because the communication only happens when the camera faces the screen. And finally, Highlight could be used for video tagging. Imagine a, a visitor taking a video at the Times Square. The hidden information from the display could be used to automatically tag the video when the user uploads the video to like social media, um, like Facebook or, um, or YouTube. So thank you all for listening to my talk. And please visit our project website for more details about the uh, papers. And I'm, t I'm glad to take your questions.